Today we're going to make a monster leaf little plate. This one um, is the little one. I have these patterns. You could download the PDF of these patterns on my website, hardshellslimysnail.com. I use the small pattern for this leaf. Uh, today I'm gonna make the big leaf. You don't have to cut out the small circles on the inside, but you do want to cut out the leaves all the, wo all the way around the border. We have one pound of clay. We're going to need a bottle to dry the leaf on to give it its shape. So I'm using a wine bottle for the larger leaf and I use a beer bottle for the smaller leaf. So that's kind of the shape that it gave it. You could also use a bowl or a can and then you'll need something to dry it on. So I just have two planks of wood. Uh, one plank is gonna be for drying and the other plank I'm gonna use uh, to kind of make a little sandwich out of it so that we can make the uh, feet flat. When I get started, I like to compress my clay into a firm little ball just to make sure it's nice and compact. And then I smack it into a little bit of a disc. We're gonna use a rolling pin and I like going in several different directions just to kind of get that clay even all the way around. I've seen people use wax paper or canvas to roll their clay out on um, and then it's easier to flip. But this is for beginners using really, really simple tools that everybody has pretty much available when you're starting. So we're, we're just keeping it to the very basics. So what the dowels are used for is once you get to about this stage, starting to get thinner, you could set your dowels up as a guide for your rolling pin. And then you could roll your pin over it and it'll give you a nice, even texture. So now we're gonna get our pattern. And you can see how one pound of clay is just perfect. You're gonna use your knife tool to cut all the way around the perimeter of the leaf. I like to start at the edge of the clay and then work my way towards the pattern and then follow the pattern around. I'm using my fingers to lay the paper down flat as I go around the edges. Now, since we started at this outer edge, we could grab that outer edge and pull. and it takes off all of the perimeter of the clay. We'll remove this gently because we're gonna come back to that later. And now, if you very gently lift up your leaf, very gently, because it wants to stick to the table, and we don't wanna put any stress on these little edges. These little edges crack really, really easy lifted them all up a little bit. So now we could just push out these inner parts of the leaf. So now the next step is going to be smoothing out all of the edges. I'm gonna put that extra clay in a bag and just save it for another project. So now we're gonna just very carefully smooth the edges with our fingers, just rolling our fingers along the edges. If your clay starts to feel dried out, you could dip your finger in a tiny bit of water, but you don't want your finger really, really wet because you don't want the leaf to be soggy and then start sticking to your table. Now you 
can use uh, your little rib tool if you start to see any inconsistencies and repeat on this side. Do the same thing. We're gonna very carefully flip it and smooth it. Now, you've worked your clay a little bit with your hands, so it's stretching it out as you're doing that. So your pattern's not gonna fit perfectly anymore. It's gonna be smaller than your leaf, and that's okay. You're gonna take your dull pencil tool, and the reason you want your pencil to be dull is we're going to trace the lines inside of the leaf, and if your pencil is really sharp, it will poke through the paper and create a hole in your clay, and you don't want that. So I'm just centering it, and then I'm going to very gently press and follow the pattern of the leaf. And I'm holding my pencil at a, a very big angle. I'm not going straight down with the pencil because, again, I don't want to rip through the paper. So I just have my pencil angled. I always do one side first. That way I remember where I'm at. And we're going to follow the pattern around the holes as well as the veins of the leaf. You can now remove the paper and we're going to use our knife tool once again and cut out these holes. Now we can lift the leaf up by the base and the holes should stick to the table. You could just pick them up. Now we will smooth the holes out with our fingers. You might add a little bit of moisture to your finger. So we're going to carefully lift it up from the base. And if you start to see on your little corners that they're starting to get some stress marks, some little cracks, add some moisture there. Okay, I'm going to flip it very gently, very gently, very gently. Ooh. Oh, no, don't break, don't break. Okay. So now we're going to smooth these inside little edges. We're gonna flip it over one more time. Ooh, okay. Now I'm gonna take my pencil one more time and just go over these lines to make them more defined. I always start with the middle first, and then you're gonna to wanna to go from the inside and work your way out. Now we're ready to move this to our bottle. So I'm gonna get my planks of wood out and my wine bottle. So with your remaining clay, you're gonna take off about a thumb, a thumb's worth. We're gonna do that twice. Just a lump. I took the back label off of the bottle so that when I put my leaf on it, it doesn't create like crease lines from the label. I'm gonna lay the bottle down and I'm gonna use this little piece of clay on the side and squish the clay down in between the bottle and the wood. And I'm gonna repeat that on both sides and basically we're just securing the bottle so that it doesn't roll. Now when I put the leaf on, I'm going to put the base at the base of the bottle and I'm going to put the top leaf over this curve right here so that the top leaf kind of curves down. We also want to make sure the veins of our leaf are face down on the bottle. So we're going to lift it up by the base and very gently I'm going to just lay it over and I 
don't really want to press it down because I like the way it naturally lays. Uh, if you press it down, the leaves are going to be really, uh, I guess, curved over the bottle and I, I want them to kind of have a little bit more of an open shape. All right, now we're going to make the feet. You don't need all this clay left over. Just, we're really just going to use a tiny bit, but I'm just going to make a little ball and then we're going to make it into a, a coil. Then we're going to compress it down on the table and make a firm little coil. What we're making looks like little marshmallows. You know, they have the, the big jumbo marshmallows and then they have the little marshmallows. So we're making a little marshmallow. I'm gonna cut the tip off of it so that it's a blunt edge. Get rid of that clay. And then I'm gonna cut a little marshmallow off. And then I'm gonna smooth it with my fingers because you want a flat edge here and a flat edge here, but you want it to be round in the middle, right? Like a little cylinder. So it's about that size. And we're gonna make three of those. Now we're gonna do what we call scoring and slipping. So I put one at the top and two at the bottom to where it's a little, it's a triangle. So we kind of keep an eye as to where that is and we're gonna use our scoring tool and score. I'll do it bigger so that you can see what I'm doing. So you're going one way and then you're going the opposite way. So it's like a checker pattern. All these little reservoirs for the slip to ooze into and you think of the slip like glue. So we've got it on the leaf and then we're gonna do it on the little foot. And so we're gonna use our tool and make these little cross hatching marks, right? And you could do that with your knife. If you don't have a scoring tool, you just use your knife and just make little marks going one way and then you go the opposite way. Then I use my paintbrush and I just soak up all that gooey slip and so I've got my paintbrush all saturated and I'm just gonna ooze it onto my foot. So it's all oozy and then I'm gonna squeeze it gently and kind of tap it so all that slip gets right in those grooves and it's gonna ooze all the way around your little foot. And we're not gonna touch that ooze yet. We're gonna kind of let it set up for a couple minutes to get a little firm and really soak in there. So we're gonna repeat that for all three. Okay, so now the next step what we're gonna do is we are going to use our other plank of wood. You could also use a plate or a tile, whatever you have. And we're gonna squish our feet down, like a sandwich, so that um, I'm gonna have to get down to look. Because we want it to be flat when we put it on the table, right? So we're just squishing those feet down. We don't want to squish it too hard because we don't want it to imprint uh, the bottom of your, all the way through to the bottom of the bottle, right? But you want to squish it enough to where those feet are creating a flat shape. And then we're gonna go over the area around the little feet and take off all that excess slip. And then once all the large amount of the slip is off, I get the paintbrush wet. And I keep my washcloth or a sponge in my water because then I could rub the paintbrush against it to really get anything excess off and then wipe it off on the towel. You could get a little bit of water on it, but not too much, and then just clean it up. And then you repeat that for all of them. Make sure you put it in a bag big enough to fit the whole bottle. But I also put a small jar or a large jar of water. I put it in the bag, but I only put a small amount of water in it. Um, 
and then I put that inside the bag and it creates humidity in the bag so that it dries slow because these uh, because they're thin and they have these little edges they have a tendency of cracking and breaking from the stress especially if they dry really fast so you want your project to dry slow especially since we added a extra piece these little feet are now glued to your part so you've got different uh, textures and different uh, the slip is wet the feet are dry so they're gonna dry at different uh, rates and you want them to dry slowly together so that there's a really good bond and they don't pop off all right have fun cheese whiz I'm talking about cheese whiz